Okay, so how about instead of just updating one field like we did last time, why don't we make a script that checks all string fields and updates them based on a certain criteria. So these fields are totally empty, so our criteria is going to be if the feature currently looping through has no value, has an empty value like this, go ahead and update it. Now in this script we're just going to limit it to strings because there are different types of fields here, doubles. We could make it go through all of that, but just for the purposes of this tutorial and un understanding update cursors, we're just going to have it go through um, string types. So this would get updated with something. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that we would need to do is we need to somehow list all of the fields that are in that shape uh, in that shape file. And thankfully, ArcPy has a handy function called list fields, uh, which is what we're going to use. So we need to set this equal to, to a variable because we need to loop through this list eventually. So why don't we call it field list, set it equal to arcpy dot list fields. Now since we don't have the work environment set, the workspace set, we need to actually provide it with the parameters and what we want to list the fields or what fields we want to list it's from points. Now if we went, if we tried to just this is something that confused me at first, just trying to print field lists. Like I would expect it just to print a list of the fields, but that's not what's going to happen. It's going to give us an error. And to fix that, we actually need to loop through this list and print each item um, individually. So this is what results if you just try to print that list as is. Uh, so what we need to do is actually print or loop through it for x in field list print x. Now this also is going to give us an error. I'm just going to run it just so you guys can see what happens. Because what I would expect it, I would expect it to loop through all the, all the fields and print x. But um, there's another component of this list fields that we're going to have to talk about. So we get this geoprocessing describe field object at. So the reason is this list fields has more properties that we didn't discuss yet. So X, as of right now, X has a bunch of properties. One of them is name. Oops. And, come on, this thing is annoying. And another would be type. So, let's get rid of this statement. What this is going to do is print the name of the field and the type of the field. Alright, so we see FID, OID, shape, geom, okay, shape, geom, alright, so it's saying scale rank, that's a small int, that's a small int, small int, name string, name parse string, name all string. Alright, so what we were talking about earlier, we only want to, we're only concerned about fields that are strings. So right here, we're going to make an if statement. We're going to say if x.type is equal to string. Now what do we want to do? Ultimately, we need this is what needs to be changed. We need to turn this into a variable. Instead of having it hard-coded, we need this to be some type of variable. So what we need to do is we're going to create a new list called... Hmm, list field and just set that equal to nothing right now and what we're going to do is every time this condition is true we're going to append that value to this new list and then this new list is going to be used as our input for this so what happens if that condition is true the way to append things to lists is you list the list or you call the list list field and dot append and what do we want to append to it now we can't just put an x we need to put an x dot name because that's the actual value of the name we're concerned with alright else we can print this is not a string it 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 is and we can say 
format, just say x.type, which will return what type it is. All right, so now I thought this would work, but it, I'm going to run it just to show you why it doesn't work. Uh, if we just go ahead and try to provide it with this whole list, list field, it's not going to work properly. So let's just run it. Yeah, something's wrong. So, okay, field names must be a string or non-empty string. So we're providing it with a, a list. So we're actually giving it a list of all of these field names that meet this criteria. So that all that doesn't make sense. We need to just it has to give it has to be provided something one at a time. So the way to do that is we can just put this whole thing in a for loop, and the for loop is going to loop through this list field. So, for, let's just call it for field in, what was it called, list field. I'm going to just indent all of this because it's in this for loop. Let's just talk about what field is every time it goes through. So, list field, again, is the list of all of the field names that are strings in our shapefile. Every time it goes through and meets this criteria, it appends the name it appends the name to this field. And now we want to loop through that field. So it's going to say for. So whatever string or whatever field, the first one that equals a string, that's going to be what field is. And it's just going to loop through and go through that, uh, that list. So what do we want to put here? Instead of list field, we want field. And that will just be one individual string. So let's just look at this. So the first, let's look at this. This is type object ID. That won't be in our new uh, our new list. That won't be. That's a geometry. This probably won't. It's a number. Number. No. All right. So let's look. Let's look. The first time it goes through, feature class is going to be the name there. The second time it goes through, string or uh, name will be. So instead of hard coding this value in right here, instead of going like this throwing it in here in quotes, we now have a list of all those values and we're looping through that list one by one and calling it right there. Um, so this is almost ready to run. Let's just take a look at it. Um, this is all the same as it was last time. We just up, let's just let's put something else in here. Um, say say Star Wars. <laughs> All right, so everywhere where there is no value. Oh, actually, no. This if we just run it right now, this would replace everything no matter it would replace all of these values with Star Wars. We don't want to do that. We only want to select or update values that are nothing or yeah, just any values that are nothing. So to do that, we just need to have another if statement right here. So print x zero. Now we're going to say if x if x zero is equal to, and it's just it's just I tried this earlier. It's not null or none. It's um, just blank quotes with one space. That's what these values are. Um, these empty values actually aren't empty. They're just one space. Um, so just like if statements work, this all needs to be indented. Now, this should do what we expect it to. It should update anything that's empty. So this whole field, for example, would get updated. And then there are some random ones. So time zone, a lot of them in time zone will be updated as well. Okay, so let's give this a try. All right, as you can see, it's going through everything really fast. Okay, that was quick, so let's go see what it output. Populated places. Okay. All right, so as you can see, all these fields, this one didn't get updated because we it didn't meet our criteria. We updated that earlier. But anything that was empty like this one was totally empty. 
This one was totally empty. It was updated. Now let's try to find a field that had some values already, but like that time zone one. Okay, as you can see, anything that was empty, it populated with Star Wars. Um, Alright, so that's all I have for you guys. Hopefully that was helpful. This is another example of how scripting can really speed things up. Um, and if you wanted, you could you could update all of these. I just I didn't want to get into that in this tutorial. But um, if you have any questions, let me know, and hopefully I can answer them. Or if you have any project ideas that you need help with, uh, just comment and I'll try to try to explain them to you, or try to do them and explain them. All right, see. You.